financial properties. If you're new here, hi, I'm Jake Bartlett and I've been teaching motion designers how to use After Effects for over a decade. I want you to benefit from my years of experience, develop good workflow habits and become an After Effects genius. These aren't your average tutorials. They're a series of lessons specifically designed to teach you valuable knowledge that most people don't learn on their own and take your motion design projects to the next level. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of the lessons and get ready to take some notes. I think a lot of After Effects users associate Essential Properties with the Essential Graphics panel and Mogerts, which isn't inaccurate. Essential Properties do determine what ends up in a motion graphics template, but Essential Properties can also be used directly in After Effects and completely level up your ability to create intelligent, reusable components that can save you hours of time. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do right now. And if you wanna take a closer look at my project file, you can download it for free down in the description. So I've got a little comp in here. I've made some color swatches so I can reference them, but let's just start by making a circle. So I'll go over to the ellipse tool, I'll hold shift and double click on it to make a perfect circle. And I'm gonna use my properties panel a lot here. So I'm gonna change the size to be something a little bit smaller. Let's say, uh, I don't know, 250 by 250. I'll use the fill color and we'll just choose the cyan that I have there. And this will be our circle, so circle. Now I'd like to add a texture to this circle. So I'm gonna go into my assets and this is a texture I got from texturelabs.org. Brady is a friend of mine. It's my favorite place to find textures. Go check them out. These are all completely free for you to use, but I'm just gonna bring it out and I'm gonna change the blend mode to overlay. And I don't want this to be applied to my entire comp, just to the circle. So I'm gonna use a track mat, grab that pick whip and set it to the circle. Make sure to turn the circle back on. And now the texture is only showing up on top of my circle, but it is a little bit hard to see. So I'm going to add an effect, the levels effect. This is using videocopilot.net's FX console. It's free, there's a link in the description. And I'm gonna add the levels effect and just crunch this histogram a little bit until my midpoint is right in the middle of that spike. That brings in some contrast so I can see that texture a bit more. Now I'm already making this a little bit more cluttered than I want. I have two layers for a single element and I wanna make this as clean as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select both of those layers and pre-compose them by pressing Control Shift C or Command Shift C on a Mac and I'll call this textured circle and I'll click okay. Now the issue with having this inside of a pre-comp is I just lost access to all of the parametric shape controls like the size of the circle. If I wanted to add a stroke or change the color, even the texture itself is locked into place now. I can't adjust it unless I go into this pre-comp. But that is where essential properties are going to come into play and make this so much easier to deal with. So first of all, in this pre-comp, I'm gonna go into the composition settings and I'm going to change it to just be a 500 by 500 square so that we just have a nice square composition with a little bit of extra room so that I can make this circle larger if I need to. Now I want to make this texture even easier to see so I'm going to add another effect just the brightness and contrast effect and I'm going to even check on use legacy because that makes these a little bit more sensitive so I can increase or decrease that contrast so we can see that show up a little bit more and I can increase or decrease the brightness. All right, so now that I have these controls set up, how do we get access to some of these in our main comp? It's actually really, really simple. With the properties panel open and my circle selected, I'm gonna right click on the size property. This is the first one that I want access to. And I'm gonna say add property to essential graphics. That's going to immediately open up the essential graphics panel for me. And we're going to see that property show up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and rearrange these panels a little bit. It's a little bit hard on the screen recording to fit everything in this screen real estate, but I'm gonna just stick it right here so it's nice and easy to see. So what are we seeing in the essential graphics panel? We're seeing the comp that's open. That's what this primary drive drop down is set to. So primary textured circle, that's the name of this pre-comp. It doesn't have an official name though. That's okay if you're just working in After Effects. If I was gonna make this into a Mogurt, I'd wanna give this a name. And for good measure, let's just call this circle rig. And I can even say set poster time and then we're gonna see a little thumbnail there. Again, that's really more for making Mogurts, but it's still good to have a visual representation of what we're seeing here. Now what's cool about Essential Graphics is that you can customize how these controls are labeled and even organize them similar similar to if you were making kind of like an expressions rig using a bunch of expression controllers in the effects controls panel. So I'm just gonna call this size because I know it's for the circle and keep it nice and clean. And then why don't we grab the color? Let's find that property right here, fill color, right click, add to essential properties, and I'll call that fill color. Now I could modify these properties right inside the essential graphics panel, but that's actually not how I wanna approach this. So I'm gonna undo back to 250, go out to my main comp, and then you'll see that underneath the layer 
layers contents. Remember, this is a pre-comp. There's now an essential properties group. And if I expand that out, we're gonna see size and fill color, the same two properties that we have over here in the essential graphics panel. And if I grab that size property and increase or decrease it, I now have regained access to that size property, even though it's within a pre-comp. And the same goes for the fill color. If I wanted to make this magenta instead of cyan, I can use the eyedropper and there we go. Now, my texture is much harder to see on this bright magenta color and I don't have access to that brightness and contrast property that I had inside the pre-comp. So let's jump back in there and you'll notice that we still have the default cyan color that we had set when we created this pre-comp. And that's because everything that you change on the essential properties is only updating that instance of the pre-comp. And I know I'm getting a little sidetracked here, but if I just duplicate this and move it over and open up the essential properties for it, I could change the color of this one. And now you see that each one is independent of each other. I could also change the size to be different. And it's all based on the same pre-comp without actually affecting what's in the pre-comp. And that's why essential properties are so powerful. Now to get those brightness and contrast controls, let's find that effect and I'll right click on brightness, add a property to essential graphics, right click on contrast, add property to essential graphics, and now I have it over here. So I'm just gonna rename these brightness and contrast. And now I have those controls that are going to show up in the essential properties menu. And I can maybe turn the brightness down, increase the contrast until I see more of that texture and I'm happy with the way that it looks. I'll do the same thing for this magenta circle, maybe increase the contrast and lower the brightness. And I might even have to play with the color a little bit just to make it not so blown out. But now we have these two textured circles, different colors with that texture showing through. But that texture is in the exact same place for each of these instances. So if I wanted to change it up a little bit and give a little bit more randomness to the texture, I could add another effect to this. Let's just add the offset effect, which is going to allow me to just shift the contents of the layer around and eventually it loops around. But I'll right click on that shift center to property, add it to essential graphics, and I'm gonna call this texture offset. So I'll just rename this texture offset. And now that property shows up on each one of these instances and I can shift it around to get a unique texture until I'm happy with the randomization. You just blew my mind. So let's just make a couple more duplicates and I'll bring up the color in the essential properties and we can very quickly create an a cyan, magenta, yellow, and black versions of these circles. Again, with complete customizable control over their size, color, brightness, texture placement, all coming from a single pre-comp. And we can do whatever we want with these layers. They're just like any other pre-comp, so I could set them all to multiply, and now they're gonna kinda blend into each other and create this overlapping, almost printed look and create something that's pretty basic, but really flexible. And if you wanna learn even more about After Effects and get a really great overview of the entire program, definitely check out Launch Into After Effects, my passion project from over a decade's worth of teaching experience where you get to make 10 fun, unique projects inside of After Effects that each teach a different aspect of the software so that you can stop getting overwhelmed with how After Effects actually works and start making really great motion design projects. Head to jakeinmotion.com today to enroll in Launch Into After Effects. After Effects. Now we can push this a lot further. Let's say we wanna have some textured edges. I'm gonna go back into the pre-comp and on the circle layer, I'm going to add the roughen edges effect. And I'll hide my overlays with Control Shift H or Command Shift H on a Mac. And I'm gonna make the size, the scale here, much smaller and I'll turn down the border as well. So we're just getting a very subtle textured edge. Maybe increase the scale a little bit and even turn down the complexity. So now if I animate the evolution, you can kind of see those wiggly edges. Let's turn that border up just a little bit more so that is noticeable. Now we've got that texture edge, it's being applied to everything. We're definitely getting a little bit more of that print feel. Now let's add in some animation. Let's say that I wanted all these circles to scale up. So I'm gonna just parent that texture layer to the circle. I'm going to add a scale keyframe, not on the size of the shape, but on the scale property for the layer itself. That way the texture is going to scale with it. And I'll move that forward, I don't know, about 20 frames maybe. I'm at 24 frames per second. So let's go 20 frames forward, snap it there. And at the beginning, I'm just gonna set it down to zero. Easy ease that second keyframe and just increase that influence all the way out. So now we're just gonna really strongly ease into that final size, which again is determined by whatever we've set up our essential property size to. But that beginning animation is now going to be applied to each one of my circles. And if I start 
offsetting the timing of these layers, they're all gonna come up at different times. Now, what if I wanted those wiggly edges to be animated? Let's jump back into here and I'll go to that rough and edges into the evolution options, double click on random seed and I'm gonna add an expression to this by alter option clicking on it. And I'm gonna just type in a very simple expression. I'm going to say posterize time and autofill that in between the parentheses, I'm gonna say six. What this part of the expression is telling After Effects is to only run this expression six times per second, or essentially running this expression at a frame rate of six frames per second. I'm gonna drop down a line and I'm gonna type out random, autofill that as well. So I've got posterized time at six frames per second. Give me a random number between zero and 10. So it's just going to generate a random seed value at a frame rate of six frames per second, anywhere between zero and 10,000. And if I play this back, you'll now see that we have these animated wiggly edges and that is going to be applied to each one of our circles back in our main comp. That's working great. But what if I wanted even more control over the way that these circles looked? Let's go back into this comp. I'm gonna add a stroke. Let's change the stroke color to solid color. I'm gonna turn the stroke width up to maybe eight. That looks pretty good. We'll leave it at white for now. And I'll add both the stroke color as well as the stroke width and the stroke opacity, which is not showing up in here. So I'm gonna have to go down into my layers, into the stroke, where's opacity? Right there. Add that to the essential properties. And while we're at it, let's grab the fill opacity. So I'm gonna find that fill opacity, add that to the essential graphics. And now I'm just gonna clean this up. All right, so these things are now relabeled. I'm gonna add a little bit of formatting by adding a group, and that's gonna allow me to organize these controls a little bit. So I'm gonna call the first one circle, and this will be anything related to the circle. So we've got fill and stroke opacity, stroke width, stroke color. Let's add the color controls at the top of this list. Fill color, we've got the size, that'll be the first property. And then we have these three, brightness, contrast, and texture offset. I'm gonna make another group and make sure that stays outside of the circle group. We'll call this texture controls. And I'll drag these in there. So texture offset, we've got brightness and contrast. And now with all of that set up, this is now much more organized over my central property. So I can see my circle controls. And actually by default, why don't we turn the strokes opacity all the way down? So I'll grab this stroke opacity inside of the essential graphics and just turn it down. That updates it in the pre-comp and it updates it everywhere else. So these are kind of like global changes to anywhere that those instances of that pre-comp are being used. And then if you change properties down here, here, it's local changes. So let's take the black circle down here and I'll turn the fill opacity down to zero and the stroke up to 100. And let's make that outlined black. And I can also change the width if I wanted to be thicker or thinner, but we're still gonna get that same animation. We still have the rough and edges. We still have all of the same circle controls. So I can make this larger up to a point. Obviously my comp was only 500 pixels by 500 pixels, but that's all adjustable as well. But now we have four different circles styled completely differently, all coming from a single instance of a pre-comp. And the sky's really the limit here. You can add almost any property to the essential graphics panel and then control it from the layers controls. You can even add expressions to these properties. So if you wanted to link up different colors using expressions, you can do that. If you wanna add in randomization or wiggle, Everything is supported as if it was a native property. It's just pulling its information from this single essential properties composition. And while this is a super basic example, you can see just how much power there is in the essential properties and could easily push this much, much further. Here's an example of something that I made using the controls that I set up in this video. Don't forget that you can download this project file if you wanna see it for yourself and dissect it. There's a link down in the description. And if you're ready to boost your graph editor skills, make sure you check out this video where I teach you how to make buttery smooth curves. Jeez.